This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, and this is Beyond the Lines. We are broadcasting live from the beautiful Think Tech Hawaii TV studio in the Pioneer Plaza in downtown Honolulu. This show is based on my book, which is also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about creating a superior culture of excellence, leadership, and finding greatness. Today's special guest is an incredible person with an amazing story. He is the CEO of the Hewlin Group, which is an extremely successful general contracting and property management company for affordable housing and community projects on the Waianae Coast. He is Charles Hugh Len, and today we are going beyond real estate. Charles, <laughs> awesome having you today. Glad to be here, super excited to be here. How's everything been with you? Everything's been great. Everything's been really great, just super excited for the new year and kicking things off. Okay, now I want to know about your background. Where did you grow up at? So I grew up in Waianae, went to Waianae Elementary, Intermediate, High School, I grew up in a uh, low-income housing area called okay. Luvehees, which is right across the Waianae Boat Harbor. Okay. And then you went to Waianae High School, and did you play sports there? I didn't play sports in school, though I played soccer, I, I played baseball, I was in martial arts, did nice. karate, got my second degree black belt. So I was heavily involved in, in various activities growing up. And then you're a father of how many kids? I have four children. Tell me about them. Yeah, my oldest is Darcy. Uh, she, she's in the mainland, she's married. Okay. Uh, my, my second daughter is also married to Krishana. Nice. And my son, Justice, uh, he has a girlfriend, and uh, my youngest son is Tainui, he's 11. Great. Now, I know, Charles, that you have an amazing story, and I want to ask you, what was the most difficult time in your life? See, the most difficult time would have to be well, the most difficult time would have to be right, let me back up, right before it went difficult. Okay. So it's 2001, January. Yeah. Uh, which is exactly, what, 19, 18 years? Yeah. Today, this month. I come up with the number one record label. Uh, There's an artist by the name of Patti. I don't know if you've heard of Patti. Yeah, I, I have. Girl. Yeah. I was, I was the record producer. Oh, I had no idea. Yeah. <laughs> I, I produced that album, so we, it came out in January of 2001 hits the radios, number one. I, I, I owned a, a nightclub right in Kalihi. Okay. You know where Kalihi Dillingham Zippies is at? Yeah. They are renovated. Yeah. In the very back corner, that was my nightclub. <laughs> so I'm in my mid-twenties, you know, the number one record label, the artist, nightclub. And two months later, it all comes crashing down. I get raided. Uh, by the FBI and DEA and, uh, and find myself getting sentenced to eight and a half years in federal prison for being a drug dealer. Wow. Oh. And uh, so it gets worse from there. Okay. My, my wife divorces me. She, she takes the kids, the threatens to, 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 to not let me see their children. Uh, actually, how it really goes down is I'm actually in, it's about a year, after being arrested, I'm in solitary confinement. Whoa. And that's hard. That was the most challenging thing I've ever been through, to be with my thoughts. The guilt, the, 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 the punishment I went through in my head. How could I do this? What did I do? Um, and while in prison, my, my, my papers come under the door. Uh, my in solitary confinement papers come under the door. And I look at it, I'm getting a divorce, and that just crushed me. That was the lowest point of my life. I, I, I contemplated suicide. I didn't eat. I couldn't sleep. I was actually starting to hallucinate because I didn't realize this till later, that your body, um, immune system starts going down. Hmm. And so I got really sick. Jeez. So what, what was like, I mean, that's a huge low point, but yes. how bad was prison? You know, prison was bad in the sense of my identity getting stripped away. Like I thought I was a successful person and all that is falling apart. The feds is taking away everything. Uh, my businesses that I did have, my partners were, you know, um, you know, they didn't do some honest things and it affected the business. 
Um, I'm losing my money, I'm losing the children, I'm losing my wife. So just losing everything, for me, it was almost like dying. I never had a near-death experience, but it was like dying for me. It was hard. I mean, I, I was in the Marine Corps, went to boot camp, which I thought at that time was the most mentally challenging thing I've ever been through. That doesn't even, that pales in comparison to being locked up in prison and then being in solitary confinement and just dealing with, with myself and things that I've never, I never knew existed that I had to deal and face with. I'm forced to. There's no outlet. I, I'm not able to talk to friends. I'm not able to do, do anything about it, to cover the pain. Did you feel shame? Definitely shame. There was, there was shame because people, most people didn't even know. And I was coaching kids soccer mm. and baseball team. And so my parents didn't know. My, my father was devastated. Um, you know, I grew up a strong Mormon background. Uh, and so it's, it just devastated everybody. Everybody. No, no one really saw it coming. So you're in prison. You have nothing. Yeah. You, you just, you have nothing. You're at the lowest point in mm -hmm. your life. So you have a choice to make. Mm -hmm. You can either be negative or positive. Mm -hmm. what, what became of, of that? What, what became your choice? You know, when, when I was at the point where it felt like I was dying, I remember, I remember what I wasn't thinking about. And what, what I was not thinking about was everything that I got. I was thinking about the cars and the fame and the music and the bars and the money. And then it dawned on me and I thought, man, if life isn't what I get, then it, it must be about something about what I give. And so I knew that at that point, I was gonna change the direction of my, of my life in a way that I was gonna see how can I give the most. Wow. And uh, it was interesting how this, I, I met this one guy that really changed my life. He, 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 he put me through this exercise. I went through that just real quick. He put me through this like meditation exercise and got me all relaxed. And, and then at one point he was like, how are you feeling? I'm like, man, I feel really bad. Oh wait, let me back up. I started crying. He had me cry. He's like, oh, just think about when you got married and think about your, your, when your son was born. And I cried and I never cried this much in my life. And at that point I realized I held in my emotions for a very long time. And there was this healing power of just feeling and experiencing. And I cried and cried and cried and I was able to get it all out. And then he put me through this meditation exercise. And after this meditation exercise, he says, okay, do you trust me? And I was like, yeah, I trust you. And he said, okay, on the count of three, jump up and scream, I'm excited, I'm excited, I'm excited. And so I did it and I had this huge smile on my face and I just wondered what the heck just happened? Like I was really just call it quits <laughs> just a few hours ago. Yeah. And now I feel the happiest I've ever been my wife still left, I still don't have my kids, I still don't have money, I'm still in prison, yet I'm extremely happy. And this, this smile lasts till dinner time, hours later, I go back to him like, what the heck just happened? Like, what happened? <laughs> and I got so driven as to finding out what just happened, because if I could understand how things changed for me in that moment, I realized there was something valuable there that could really change my life. So what became your purpose in life? Did you find your purpose in life right then and there or later? I, it was later. It was later. At that point, I, I somehow realized that I created the life that I experienced. Everything that happened, as much as my, I, I, I wanted to blame, you know, my wife for leaving me, why did you leave? You shouldn't have left. I've done this, I did that. Why, why is everyone doing this to me? I realized that I was responsible for everything that happened. And there was some, it was like a sense of relief when I realized that. Because I realized then that means if I'm going to change everything in my future, it was going to be because of me changing. Yeah. And I just became driven to, to, to transform myself. So what did you start to learn and study about when you're in prison? I read books. I mean, actually, the very first book, I had never read a book in my life. I hated reading. And the very first book I read was a Tony Robbins book, wow. Awaken the Giant Within. Yeah. And it just blew my mind. I was like, what the heck is this? And I just started devouring books. Books, I was uh, reaching out to people because going to federal prison, I had access to people I would never have access to coming from Wai'anae. Uh, I was locked up. So they sent me to a prison camp. So there's no fences or barbed wires, just a sign that says, do not walk past. Yeah. And some of the guys, you might know them, 
one of the guys that I was locked up with was Jordan Belfort. Hmm. They did a movie yeah. of him, uh, Wolf of Wall Street. Yeah. So I'm standing up for count. He's across from me, and his roommate is Tommy Chong. Right? And my roommate is this uh, GE, XGE executive who, who started the company, the machine used to test your eyes. Yeah. That was his company. <laughs> right? So here, this guy, me, I'm, I barely can read. I'm carrying a dictionary around for years because I'm reading words I don't understand. And I'm around all these smartest people I've ever met, you know, some of the smartest people in the industry. And I just soaked up everything I could. The guys have nothing but time. Yeah. They're not doing anything. It's like, hey, can you teach me real estate? Sure. I, I met them every week or stocks or business or raising money, private placement. So that's where I got my education. Wow. So you learned a lot about real estate while you were in prison. Yes. And then when did you buy your first property? So I came out of prison in 2007. It was my first year out of prison. In How, 2007. What did you buy? I actually bought my parents' home. Oh. I, 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 With I, what? With what? You had no money. So the first, so how we, how we bought, <coughs> how we did that deal was, there's this thing called a gift of equity, where your, your, your parents can gift you the equity without having to put the down payment down. So I was able to get a loan, and they basically gifted me the 20%. So I, I didn't have to put down the traditional 20%. Okay. And that's how I bought the property. My mind went to, okay, technically that's not a real deal because I, I got help from my parents. So, uh, but it, it helped give me some of the, the, the validation that well, I can do this. When, when did you end up getting your second property then? The following year. Oh, that's fast. Yeah, the following year I bought my second property. And then uh, there, was just, there was just loans where you can get where you know, there's no money down, just like a USDA loan. I, I, what, what, what happened is I got committed to the goal first. I was, yeah. I, I, I was in the seminar, and it was this 90-day seminar, and they said, okay, well, what do you want to achieve in 90 days? And I said, I'm going to buy a house. <laughs> and I was like, man, I don't, you know, I don't have the resources. I don't have credit. I've been in prison, so I don't have three years tax returns. I'm making minimum wage. I, I don't have all the makings, you know, the makings to, to buy a home. So I committed 90 days. I'm going to buy a home, man, within three months. I bought, which technically was my second property, a Maka Kilo. Yeah. And then it just grew from there. So when and why did you start the Hewlin Group? Hewlin Group kind of grew on its own. At first, my initial motivation was to do something. I, I, I needed to survive. I was living with my parents. When I came out of prison, I lived with my parents in low-income housing again. I, I was kind of dealing with the fact that my parents went in debt because of, you know. Because of you. Because of me. They were having to take care of your kids while you were in They having to take care of my kids. They sent me money, you know, so they were in debt. And living in low-income housing, that was a challenge. Yeah. So my initial drive was to get them out of debt. My, my, my father, I was fortunate enough to see my father again. I thought I would never see him alive because my father is very old. So when I came out of prison, he was probably in his 90s already. And I knew once he passed, they would be in really bad financial shape because they needed his retirement. Um, my parents needed his retirement to survive. So my initial drive was to just get them out of debt. Yeah. I needed to, it was finances and resources. And, um, but as I started to acquire more properties, and I started realizing the difference that I was making in people's lives and tenants crying. Oh my gosh, you know, it helped me get, you know, some getting off the beach. Some of them just getting, you know, their first place. I realized that I was making a difference in, in, in the community. Oh, big time. And, yeah. and the state legislature, you spoke in front of the state legislature. What, what, when did that happen? That happened last year, okay, January, and interesting. They called me and said, "Hey, Charles, I want you to come and speak uh, at the opening session." Yeah. And my, my mind goes, my mind wants to say no. Okay, I get nervous. <laughs> I'm scared. Right? I'm like, oh, are you asking me? You asking me to speak? He's like, "Yeah, we want you to speak. What do you want me to do? Just do the opening speech. We want you to inspire. You know, get you get you. Your, your job is to get everyone kind of in the right space to, to start the year." Yeah. And so I did that in January, and that was just such an amazing experience. That's awesome, Charles. And 
you're also a fantastic inspirational speaker. I've seen you speak before, mm -hmm. and you give a great message of hope. How, mm -hmm. how do you do? You really love doing those inspirational speeches. I love. It's interesting when I hear the term inspirational yeah. because I guess that's what is received. I get that quite a bit. I think, you know, as I'm up and I'm speaking and I'm sharing, I, I'm really not. My whole intention and goal isn't to inspire. Yeah. And I know that's what, that's what happens. My, oftentimes, my, my whole goal is just to share really what happened for me, you know, my, my, my life, uh, what I went through, and not on a surface level, just really down on an emotional level, the real challenges that I've dealt with that I think a lot of people deal with on a regular basis. Yeah. And, um, and, and as I share with them, you know, my journey, people oftentimes says, man, that was very inspiring. <laughs> no, I, it, totally, it totally comes off like that. And, and I was inspired and I even cried in your, in your uh, speech. But Charles, we're going to take a quick break. And then when we come back, we're going to continue going beyond real estate. Okay. Thank you. You are watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii with my special guest, Charles Hugh Len. We will be back in one minute. Hi, I'm Lisa Kimura. I'm the host of Family Affairs on Think Tech Hawaii. Join us every Tuesday at 11 a.m. to talk about the issues that really matter. Everything from policies that need to be changed in Hawaii to the fact that we need better gender equality so that we can all have a better shot. Again, join us every Tuesday at 11 on Think Tech Hawaii for Family Affairs. Aloha. Aloha, I'm Dave Stevens, host of the Cyber Underground. This is where we discuss everything that relates to computers that's just going to scare you out of your mind. So come join us every week here on thinktechhawaii.com, 1 p.m. on Friday afternoons. And then you can go see all our episodes on YouTube. Just look up the Cyber Underground on YouTube. All our shows will show up. And please follow us. We're always giving you current, relevant information to protect you, keeping you safe. Aloha. <music> Welcome back to Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. My special guest today is Charles Hugh Lin, who is the CEO of the very successful Hugh Lin Group. And today, we are going beyond real estate. Charles, you have a passion for helping people. Mm -hmm. um, tell me about that. Uh, you know, it's when I... I think I first shared what was happened for me and my story, and I had the confidence to share what would be coming from prison. And I saw how it started to inspire people. Yeah. Like, and the benefit people started getting, the, it was crazy. Because my mind thought, well, it's, it's just me. Like, well, what's so special about it? <laughs> I don't realize how special it is. And as I started sharing and talking, and people were like, wow, well, can you speak over here? Well, can you come share over here? Can you do? And it just, started to grow and grow um, and then more people would approach me and I and I, I, I've learned so much over the years I mean from reading and attending various seminars and meeting amazing people such as yourself uh, you know I sort of became this almost walking person who helps everybody I try to come across <laughs> with you know and sometimes it's not often like it's we get deep in a conversation, though sometimes I could be getting a cup of coffee with someone and just to brighten their day by, you know, opening up. Yeah. And in the moment, somehow they feel different, you know, and to be able to constantly do that every single day of my life, no matter where I go, from just meeting someone and brightening up their day just even for a small moment or a four or five hour session or speaking engagement where I'm transforming a bunch of people's lives. I just enjoy it constantly. Well, what you are doing in the Waianae community is, <laughs> I mean, it's amazing. Yeah. I mean, I, I went to Waianae a few weeks ago mm -hmm. and I see this building that I know you own because it's like really significant uh, improvements there in Waianae. Mm -hmm. So I want everyone to visit Waianae and see what you're doing to really transform that community. I mean, you're definitely going beyond the lines. Mm -hmm. And I know you're working mm -hmm. on my book right now. Yes. How are you liking it so far? I love the book. You know, I love the book. And one of the things I like about your book is uh, the simplicity of it. Basics, getting, getting down to basics. You know, I think a lot of people, and even myself included sometimes, I'm looking for the next thing. I mean, if I just, what's the next thing if I learn or do or, 
or the latest trend or the latest technology, maybe that would be it. And what your book reminded me of is getting back to the basics. Just get back to the basics, the fundamentals, and master the fundamentals. Like take those fundamental key steps that you do, like your purpose, right? And just drilling it in, and just drilling it in, drilling it in. And so thanks to you and the book, my whole message for this year is fundamentals. Not only for myself, but drilling that into my company and everything I do is just getting back to the basics. It's all about the four P's and the eight keys. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. And that's what you do, actually. Mm -hmm. It's just I put it together in a book. In a way that's easily explained. Yeah. That I, I was, would never be able to do it myself. Charles, I want to ask you, what's an important lesson you learned in your life so far? You know, I think that I could sum it up. It would be that one moment in my life when I realized that life is all about giving. You know, it's all about giving. And I know I've heard some people say, well, if I give everything, then what, what about me? Yeah. How do I give, how do I get, you know, give? And I realized that if you limit your ability to give, you ultimately limit your ability to get. Yeah. You know, I was, real quick, I was recently from, it was for my birthday, I was wanted, I woke up in the morning, I'm like, man, what do I want for my birthday? And I said, I want two things. I want a Christmas tree, because I haven't celebrated Christmas in a while. And I want to see whatever opportunity put in my way for me to make a difference. And I got my tree, and I have this digital picture frames that come up. That's why it's my vision board, you know, digital pictures. Yeah. And prior, about a week prior to that, I get a call that the uh, school, the Waianae Elementary, is looking for a, a new library, a you know, learning center. And so, fast forward to my birthday, I, I, I'm driving and I'm visualizing these pictures that I put up a year earlier. And one of the pictures that pop up is a, is a picture of Waianae Elementary sign. The second picture that pops up is the picture of about 30 students in the library. Oh. And I immediately, I'm crying, I'm tearing, and I realize this is what I was meant to do. I'm supposed to do this. And so I call the person head of the committee and say, I'm going to donate the 100000 that the school needs for the new library. Oh, fantastic. And there was something really liberating about that. Because my mind will say, oh, I can't do it and how do I, you don't do it, that's a lot of money. <laughs> oh, what are you doing? You want, to talk me, you want to talk me out of it. Yeah. But when that happened, I realized how much a hold that money had on me and the limitations I put on myself. And if I just made, like, just, like you said, just giving, and I realized I gave, but I realized I limited the amount I gave, which limited the amount that I can get. Uh -huh. Oh, I love hearing that, Charles. Love hearing that. Yeah. I want to also know, Charles, what's a memory that really tugs at your heart that you have? Hmm. The what? It would be last year when I spoke at the legislature. Okay. And it's not the speaking itself. I. So prior to speaking, I, I was preparing for speech. I was praying for that speech. And I'm in, the, I'm in the offices, and uh, my, my daughter and my mother's there, and I tell them, I'm prepared for the speech, so don't mind me, don't bother me, just sit there. And I'm looking out the window, and I'm just in the zone, looking out the window, hands in my pocket, and my daughter snaps a picture. I don't know this. After I speak, I go home, I'm tired. I'm, I was preparing for the speech for days, and so I'm beat, I'm wore out. I get in bed, I go on my phone and I see this picture my, my daughter posted. And mind you, I had very strange relationships because I went to prison. Yeah. And so it took a lot of work for me to rebuild those relationships with my children. Because when I came home, they were adults. Yeah. They had no reason to want to repair those relationships with me. And um, I opened the phone and I see and my daughter posts that, that picture. And on top of it, she says, uh, you've always dreamt of changing the world. I will always support you. The greatest man, my father. And I realized at that moment to be a hero 
and to be considered the greatest man that my daughter has ever known is worth more to me than anything I ever accomplished in life. And that is the constant reminder for me that life isn't about what I do or the successes or the buildings or what I change. And it's the legacy that I live of the memory of who I am, not only to my children, my family, the community, and everyone that I come across. Whoa, <laughs> that's amazing. That, that, wow, Charles. I wanna ask you, Charles, um, about your business. Mm -hmm. I mean, you are so successful with your business and I mean, you're changing people's lives, you know, giving them affordable housing and just really making Waianae I mean, a respectable city. It's, mm -hmm. it's amazing what you're doing. Thank you. Um, what are some challenges that, you're, that you face with your business? The biggest challenge is the whole misconception that comes with Waianae. Uh, you know, acquiring a building. I say it's easy to acquire a building and renovate it. Convincing new businesses to come to Waianae and open a business, that, that's, that's been the challenge. Um, but we are overcoming those challenges. You know, we brought in the first bakery to open up in Y9 in 20 years. Yeah. Uh, Pearl Harbor Federal Credit Union opened up in Y9 in my, you know, one of my, our buildings. Um, we got the, some of the best restaurants. Actually, we, uh, in, in our Miley building, four of our tenants are rated number one in Yelp, in Y9 for best restaurant, best vegan, best bakery, best nail salon. So we're, you know, we're, we're, we're looking to bring the best and the, the best entrepreneurs, the best businesses, and bringing them out to Y9. And yeah, it's just a challenge. However, um, we believe that, that it is possible that the, the, the people of Y9 are, are not only want it and are, are, are ready for it, um, but that there's so much more uh, uh, businesses and more opportunities that's, are in, that's in Waianae that very few people tend to believe exist. Yeah, no, it, it's so impactful what you're doing. It's truly uh, remarkable. And I want to ask you one more thing before we wrap up, Charles. Mm -hmm. What are you hoping to achieve in your future? I want to see the change in Waianae. You know, Waianae has always had this, just a bad rap. Now, growing up, why and I, as a kid, always would hear about it. Why and I stay away from why and I, or all these just, just negative things that come with the with the with the term or, or our town why and I. And I just want to see it happen in my lifetime, where why and I, where one day, all right, when when someone comes off the plane visiting Oahu, and they 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 walk out to somebody on the street and they say, hey, you know, where should I go? What do you think? Where should I visit? And they say, you know what? You should go to Waianae. It's the most beautiful place on the island. And uh, for me to be, to have, for me to have that in my lifetime would just be such an amazing thing to see. Well, you're making it happen, Charles. Uh, it's, I mean, I want, the world needs more Charles Hugh Lens in the world. And I really wanna thank you for being on the show and taking time today. I mean. Thank you for having me. You're an inspiration because one person is changing the community. And when you have one person that can change a community, that leads to changing a state, which leads to changing a country and the world. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Charles. Thank you. And thank you for watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. And a special thank you to my clothing sponsor, Iolani Incorporated. For more inf information, please visit my website, rustykomori.com, and my book is available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and all Costco stores in Hawaii. I hope that this show inspires you to create your own superior culture of excellence and to find your greatness and help others find theirs. Aloha.